So one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is, can I buy a test pressing of one of those early Boss Tunage releases? To which I have to say no, and I'll tell you why in this video. So there came the time when I was about 16, 17, um, I'd been saving up for Christmases, birthdays, just asking parents and relatives to give me money rather than any presents because I wanted to save up to put out a 7 inch single. Um, and so the time came when I had all the funds there, I had the bands recorded and obviously now I had to think, where do I get a 7 inch single pressed? So we're talking sort of early 1990, um, so I'm looking in the back of Enemy and Melody Maker and there are all these company names of people who can get records pressed for you with sort of package prices. So I remember looking through and one stood out in particular and it was a company called IPS, Indie Pressing Services of Peckham. Uh, and the reason they stood out is they were about 50 quid cheaper than everybody else. And obviously where we were on such, such a tight budget on those early releases, um, it meant I could get the record out and press quicker than saving up to do it somewhere else. Um, soon got to learn over the years that cheapest is not necessarily the best. Um, but, uh, you know, I was naive, young, thought, yeah, I'll get it pressed there. So um, I remember we went down to their offices in Peckham. My parents drove me actually down to London because um, I was obviously living in rural Lincolnshire, didn't drive at that time. And I think they just wanted to check that I wasn't handing over money to just <laughs> someone and would never see it again. Uh, so we went down there and it was run by a guy called Mike Spencer. And Mike was quite a character. Um, he'd been, I think he was the singer in either the Bishops or the Count Bishops. Uh, and then in a band called The Cannibals. And he ran this brokerage um, based in Peckham. So basically what would happen is he had a sleeve printer in his sort of fac little factory warehouse place. So he'd print his own sleeves, but the records got pressed over in Hungary uh, at this vinyl plant, which I think only did classical music called Hunger Rotem. Um, I only know that because he forgot to take the label off one of the boxes he sent because he was used to rip the labels off so no one else would know where he was getting his records pressed. Um, so I remember going down and handing it over and I remember seeing things like Mega City 4's first 7 inch, there was a sample of that on his desk so he'd obviously press that for them and I think on the machines he was printing some UK subs LP sleeves at the time for released emotions records. So I obviously thought, well, this guy must be reputable, This he must be in business, he mu it must be the right place for me to press these records, so uh, that's fine. I remember distinctly having the conversation with him saying, oh, do I get any test pressings? Because I knew you got test pressings with vinyl records, you know, to make sure it was all fine before it went out to pressing. He went, no, to be honest, test pressings are a luxury, you don't really need them. I was like, oh, right, okay. Um, I was later to find the whole reason why Mike dissuaded anyone from having test pressings was that his whole business model and how he was sort of pressing things 50 quid cheaper than anyone else at the time was he used to lump together about 8 to 10 orders and ship them all at the same time, the masters, get them all pressed at the same time and then get them all shipped back from Hungary in one delivery. So obviously, if he had a job where a test pressing was rejected by any particular man for whatever reason, it meant everything else was held up as well. So that's why he didn't do test pressings. So um, it was quite a, quite an interesting little setup he had there. Um, so we pressed the first few records. In fact, all the stuff from like the Boss Tunage first era was pressed with them. Um, yet to varying degrees of success, I guess. Um, sometimes uh, I remember having conversations with him where you'd turn up and he hadn't printed the sleeves um, or he was printing the sleeves that night and I also remember my dad who is probably one of the most easygoing people in the world who was driving me down in the van to pick up these records the next day knowing he had to then drive on to Oxfordshire to Plastic Head who were distributing it's the Floor 81 LP I think and he said Mike he actually went on the phone to Mike and said Mike if I turn up in Peckham tomorrow having driven from Lincolnshire and those sleeves aren't ready I'll break your kneecaps and I think Mike actually took him at his word when my dad was kind of joking and he actually stayed up through the night I believe to print these sleeves so it was ready when we turned up um, there were a few other mishaps uh, Goober Patrol's Dutch Ovens album um, that should have been a black background on yellow and when we picked them up ready for the tour he had printed them the wrong way record um, but the tour started that day so it just went as is um, so yeah so I used him for a while like I say he was quite a character um, but the funniest bit of the story really is that sort of when I later on obviously I stopped using them in about 1995 I think the out of order single which I'll talk about um, came, was done was pressed through them on CD 
but um, come around 1997, 1998, our paths would cross again because by that time I was working for a CD plant in South London. I moved to London and I was working for a CD plant called Making Records. And Music Media Manufacturers, which was the new name of Indie Pressing Services, ended up being my customer. So it, it totally about turned within the space of sort of six, seven years where um, I was actually pressing records for Mike rather than him pressing them for me. Um, but yeah, so funny old story, but that is why there are no test pressings because I basically was told we didn't need them and they were a luxury, um, which uh, I now know is not the case. You do need test pressings. Okay, see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>